Hi everyone, it's Nicole and I'm here to share with you a class sample. So this is day one from Scrapathon 5. Right now Scrapathon 6 is in full force. Up until September 15th you can get it for 25% off so I'll have the link in the description box below. And there's a little something different this time around. Instead of the videos being voiced over, it, I'm doing the 10, 10, 10 method. So 10 of the videos are real time, 10 of the videos while I do the challenge or the technique, it's gonna be real time for that part and then voiced over for the rest. And 10 of the videos are gonna be voiced over. So what does that mean? Way more hours are video time. Now, like I said, right now it's 25% off. If you've taken any of my classes before, check your email. You'll have an extra $5 off, which makes it $25. Plus, I gave six digital files to everyone in the class, and that's a $12 value. So that's like getting the class for $13. So enjoy the class sample. Hi everyone, welcome to Scrapathon. This is the first day, and I thought I'd chat a little bit about how sometimes I get inspired. So I ordered an order from Simon Says Stamp. If you're on my YouTube chan channel, you saw that I shared my haul. And when I got this, well, first of all, $5 off, so yay. And um, I was gonna throw this out and I thought, you know, oh no, I can keep it and then I can drag stuff you know, on my paper. And I was like, oh, that'd be great if I could drag inks and, and do like a layout for the class for that. And then I came, you know, time to, to work on my class. And I, I still was thinking of that. And I brought out some pinks and everything. And while I was getting my paints, it they're right next to my Distress Oxides. And I was like, ooh, then it's no mess. I can just drag the distress oxide and the reason I decided on the distress oxide is that when they dry they're kind they're kind of chalky so they're not so much in your face then I went into my stash of page kits I chose a page kit that I could grab a few colors and then this pattern paper was in that page kit so then I went and grabbed some distress stains that really coordinated with the colors in that pattern paper. So now I'm gonna put you on fast forward and we're going to get this page kit together. So once I decided that I was gonna use the Distress Oxides instead of paints, then I just went to my stash and grabbed some white cardstock that were um, just white cardstock that came with some albums that I had bought years ago. So they're not like really great cardstock. And then I just played. I made some lines that were vertical. I made some lines that were horizontal. And then I did a mixture where I would just use the ink. And the only difference is if you're making a, sort of a mishmash of all the different colors, you want to dry the ink in between all the layers because then you're going to add the color before onto your ink pad and it's going to make a mess. So I had fun. I made probably five or six backgrounds. I'm showing you two here and I'm bringing another one that I had done previously. And then I used the one that I liked the most. So when I put this page kit together, I had no idea what challenge I was going to do and then when I decided on this challenge I just went through you know all 30 page kits and I was kind of quickly looking through the page kits and thinking which page kit could I use that has quite a bit of colors so that I can use a lot of ink pads and then I just you know zoned in on that pattern paper and then that's how I chose the colors of the ink using that pattern paper. I cut my photo down to four by four. I matted it on some light pink. And then I had this scrap of purple in with the page kit. And as you can tell, it doesn't mat the entire photo, but I knew that it would just give me a spot where I, 
I could add a cluster on that side of the photo. Now, when I was looking at the layers, I had two pattern papers with that floral and you can see that I'm flipping it back and forth. I didn't know if I wanted the back, like the long strip, the four by 12 strip to be the pink or the flowers, but I found when I put the flowers up against the photo, the photo kind of got lost. So I kind of like the tone on tone better for that third mat for the photo and then the flowers as the big strip. This specific page kit had a ton of scraps. This was one of the page kits that I put together using scraps. And I've said this so many times, but it is one of my favorite ways to put layers together. Uh, a lot of these pattern papers, I use them in the size that they were in as, you know, the, the strip in the background was four by 12 and I use that in that size the square pattern paper the tone on tone with the pink is you know about six and a half by six and a half and i used it in that size and then that pink cardstock was in that size and i just kept building the layers now if i wanted my ink drags to show a little bit more what I could have done was made my layers to be a little smaller. And then I would have seen a whole lot more of my ink drags. But I was happy with, I wanted sort of a bullseye to go to the photo. So I was okay with just a little bit of color sticking out at the top and the bottom of the page. And as I'm pulling my embellishments, the embellishments because i went by color a lot of the embellishments are in the tones so as i'm putting down my embellishments like this little uh, tag there that i just put down at the bottom of the layout it had pink and then i had some purple viewfinders and i'm putting stuff almost directly with the ink drag so that pink is with pink and purple is with purple and i did the same thing with the embellishment cluster at the top of the layout. The way I put my embellishments, I tried to keep the colors so that they matched up with the colors in the background. So I want to tell you the colors that I chose, my Distress Oxides. The yellow was the Fossilized Amber, the pink was Worn Lipstick, the purple was Wilted Violet, the blue was Faded Jeans, and that teal color was Cracked Pistachio. And I think the best ink pads to do something like this is the ink pads that are kind of spongy and not the ones that are felted. Another thing that is helpful is if your ink pad, your foam ink pad has just been refilled. So it's nice and juicy. And then that way, when you're dragging your ink pad, it's leaving a whole lot more ink on the layout. Now, I wasn't too worried, as you can see some of them at the end, it was kind of skipping the color and I thought that was good because then it wasn't that the each line was, you know, perfect. It looked more homemade and that's why I liked it that way. So when you're looking at the page, you can tell that it's a homemade background and it's not a pattern paper that was manufactured that way. Now, if I would have used paints instead of the inks, I would have used either an old credit card or a gift card or like that four by six promo card that I had from Simon Says Stamp. I would have used that to drag the paint course using that method then you'd have to find different ways to make sure that you know if you wanted to do vertical lines how to make it so that they can sit side by side you could cut a hole out of the center of a cardstock and make your own mask and then you could just take your paint and you know drag it or you could take one of your sponges and totally soak it up with the paint and use that to drag across your page. There's so many different ways that you can, you know, either drag some inks or drag some paints. Now, whenever I play with something like this, something that's messy, you know, like, like distress oxides or paints or uh, misting, 
usually what I'll try to do is do a few backgrounds because you know you're in the mess so you might as well make a few backgrounds and then later on you can use the different backgrounds that you did on another layout or you can use some punches and punch some circles out of them or different shapes and then you can use those as you know embellishments on your layout and another thing is by playing that's usually how you'll find something that you say no I totally don't like this or you'll find something that might become one of your favorite things to do. Okay, so once I had all my embellishment clusters done, I went into my drawer of enamel dots. I have all my enamel dots divided by color now, and I went and matched them up with all the colors that I use as my background. And I'm gonna use um, a little bit of each color in all the different embellishment clusters so that every color is represented within the enamel dots. Okay, so before we wrap today up, I want to remind you that there is a Facebook group and it is a lot of fun where everybody shares what they've created. Everybody's chatting up a storm already before it even started. And this is where I'm going to put up the file that I'm going to share with you as a little bonus. It's going to be a file of labels of different colors so that you can either print it at home on your, com on your printer or you can send it off and have it printed over and over again and then you can use those in your embellishment foundations. And the last thing I'm gonna do on this layout is I went and got some sprays and I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of splatters in all the colors that I had chosen. And next, color in grid. So we'll see you there.